Kill it and grill it. Steamed head of blight. Welcome to my channel. I focus on tabletop role-playing games, video games, and science fiction. In Dungeons and Dragons, a blight is an awakened plant with the power of intelligence and mobility. The Monster Manual explains where they came from and that they're a... Um, it, it, where they sprouted from the, the, a stake that was driven through a vampire. Um, but blights are an interesting creature. They're not very dangerous. They're normally only like a one-eighth challenge rating. So they're fairly simple to, to kill, You could, but there could be a large number of them. But what do you do after you've managed to slaughter all the, the um, blights? Well, this brings up an interesting question, at least in my mind. <laughs> I don't know about you. So, the definition of vegetarian is a person who doesn't eat meat and sometimes a, uh, other animal products, especially for moral, religious, or health reasons. That's one definition I found on the internet. So, can you be a vegetarian and eat an awakened plant? <laughs> and then, then we get into vegan where you can't have um you, you don't use animal products the, 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 these are both shall we say interesting questions i'm um an omnivore with carnivore tendencies i like meat and but i'll eat just about anything there are a few things i don't like but i'm sitting here going could a vegetarian eat a blight and we'll we'll talk about that, this in a minute. So there are three kinds of blights that it described. There's a stick blight, a, tw a vine blight, and we're going to talk about the needle blight. And the reason we're talking about the needle blight, the vine blight is described as a collection of vines. They don't really have, they're they're just all vine type things. And the stick stick one is too dry it's too sticky but the needle but the needle blight is like it has a, a body and it has a head so we're going to talk about cooking the head of a blight the reason uh the body is 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 a big mass and it, it's more like the trunk of a tree where the head has some other parts which we'll talk about in a second and it allows us to something that we could actually consume um, so you cut off the head of the blight and um, as pictured in the fifth edition of the DMG blights have eye holes and nostrils and a mouth well they don't actually eat they consume blood through their roots. That's what. The, that's how they kill. They kill and consume the blood of their victims through the roots. That's described, but doesn't explain why they have a mouth and a nostril. This is probably just um, anthropomorphic uh, imitation of uh, the vampire and such that was, which was the cause of the blight. But these parts are going to be uh, are holes in in the head. And the problem with them is that they're going to be covered also with the needles. Now, the needles are, they can shoot them, but they're much more like pine needles. They, they can be sharp, and that they're, they're that. but you want to get them out of the eye sockets and the nostril and the pseudo mouth. I'll call them a pseudo, whether they see out of the eyes is an interesting question. But anyway, they're eye sockets and you have the nostril and the mouth. And we've got to, we've got to get rid of that because we're going to cook and we don't want that part there so what happens so the best approach that i've thought of is that you get out your trusty dagger and you sh make a bunch you get a piece of dry log and you shave off some dry wood shavings now this is what you pack loosely into the eye sockets and the nostrils and the mouth and then you light this on fire now the dry kindling will catch on fire and will set the needles and dry the needles and burn the needles and out of the eye sockets and the nostril and the pseudo mouth. So this will clean up the head of the blight. Now if 
the area is particularly dry or there's been um, uh, a drought in the area, then the whole head of the blight may catch on fire when you do this. And if it does, you probably just should let it burn because it's not worth the effort because if the, if the blight's head is so dry that it catches on fire after burning these out, it's not going to be very tasty. So that's sort of one way to immediately know if you've got a head that's worth cooking or not. So after, you, after you've managed to burn out this, then you want to take either a, an axe or, or a, you can do it with your dagger. They're not really that tough, um, but you need to cut, you want to split the head. And you want to split the head right between the eye sockets so you can get in and scrape out. You want to scrape out all that bur those burnt needles and the, the burnt part of the blight head. So you've now got this head split in half. And you want to get out all the dry needles and such out of the, the nostrils and so on. So now you've just got this nice head. Now you want to off the top of the head you want to cut off any needles or something so you're just down to the woody exterior of the head and you've cleaned out the that now wash it off carefully you need to get rid of any of the sap that could be there the sap turns to be somewhat bitter I mean, it will come off in the cooking but it's best if you can wash off as much as the sap now get a large pot and you fill it with water and then you want to add salt so it's a nice salted water. And if you've got some, some bay leaves and some peppercorns will, will help enhance the flavor. So you bring the pot to a boil and then you slide the halves of the head into the pot. Now what you want, ideally you want uh, something heavy to weight the, the heads down because the heads are going to float. And you want them actually submerged in the water. So uh, depending upon the size of your pot or whatever, you need a plate or a heavy plate or something, the, or, you know, an old shield or a small buckler shield or whatever, something to hold down the, the heads down into your large pot. And you want to bring it to boil and then turn it down to just a simmer, so which is barely boiling because you're going to have to add water because we're going to cook these for at least two to perhaps three hours and the way to tell when the blight's head is done is you uh, you remove the the weight and then if your dagger will slide all the way through the head of the blight and uh, then you know with very little resistance now it's ten it's cooked tender and so on so now you can take them out of the water perhaps let them rest for a little bit because they're, they're so hot at this point in time. They're not good to eat. And um, I would serve them with uh, melted butter mixed with, with, with uh, smashed or, or you know minced garlic so that you have a little bit of a garlic flavor. Sprinkle them liberally with salt. You eat the inside, the outside the blight is going to be tough and fibrous, just like the, tr the, the, the trunk of a tree, because that's basically what we're doing. But we're, we're eating the, the soft, um, quote, brain tissue of the blight, because that's been cooked uh, up and it's been cooked for a couple of hours and it's nice and soft. And it will have a, a lighter, it'll, it'll have turned a darker green when you've cooked it. And you... Uh, taste this it's got a wonderful woody uh, taste with a little bit of peppercorn from from the, the flavor of the uh, the peppercorns that were added there and with a hint of nuts it, because it has this nutty woody flavor that is quite delicious and so what happens is that you you tend to eat up and uh, the, the pieces there and if you're cooking for an entire party you may want to cook um, you know uh, half a blight head is good for shall we say a normal person but if you've got some fighters in your party you may want to give them a, at least a whole head or if they're really hungry maybe two so you you know depending upon how many attacked your party you can slaughter you can cut off their heads and have a nice blight head feast 
with this. Um, you may run out of butter unless you've got a lot of butter or, is there, or there's a farmer nearby with this. But it's it, this this turns into a nice, somewhat healthy. I mean, it's not, it's low fat. Um, you know, is, is it vegetarian? That's an interesting question. Like I said, it, it's there, but it's... Um, it, 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 you know, some people like if you've got it a little bit of vinegar with them. Other people like uh, a mayonnaise garlic dip. That's an, also another option. But it, it's the it turns into a very tasty meal. It's quite filling. Uh, one downside to this um, is like many products like if you've ever eaten cabbage or broccoli or cauliflower these tend to increase uh, the occurrence of flatulence so you could have a scene reminiscent of the scene from blazing saddles or <laughs> with everybody eating beans after you've eaten some blight so <laughs> just be prepared for that um, it's a tasty meal um, Give it a try. Tell me what you think about that. Would you be interested in trying Blight? Uh, is it vegetarian or not? And um, I'd like to hear your comments below. Thank you for watching my video. I look forward to learning what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, press the thumbs up button. You can subscribe by clicking the link in the lower left. If you are interested, there are links to more content.